we're going to open up the meeting of uh, the Arlington Redevelopment Board of May 19, 2014. Um, the uh, really we have well one agenda item and then approval of minutes. Uh, the one agenda item is to uh, review and uh, consider um, the matrix that staff has put together with respect to the LBA and the SPA uh, for the Sims project, uh, or I should say actually Arlington 360, um, and uh, uh, to go over that and to the extent that uh, the board is um, uh, accepting of this uh, completion chart uh, to consider uh, providing a substantial completion um, vote to uh, to the Arlington 360 project. So, um, Carol, do you want to kind of go through maybe process might be helpful on to the describe how we yeah. address this? Uh, yes, last week um, Jake Upton prepared. Uh, an updated spreadsheet on both the land disposition agreement and the special permit conditions with the current state um, for most of the items being complete or actually they were some of them were in process as we were meeting and Friday and today we confirmed that some of the escrow and bonds and payments were made. We were confident they were, but we wanted to go back and double check that they had been because not there, there were lots of different parties involved in this. Um, so that when I say we, I mean Laura Wiener and myself with Jake. And we have a memo from um, Right, and I think just to clarify, this is the matrix that Foley has put together for us. Uh, Jonathan Book and Foley, I believe, was the uh, um, author of this particular matrix uh, when we started. Um, and I think that's one we've been working on for, for a while. Now. So we initialed, the staff initialed, um, or identified the party who confirmed the completion for each item. So in the last column on the right, Town of Arlington Review, you can see who is confirming the status. So why don't we just take a few minutes and just kind of go through and then, um, actually I usually start with Bruce, but if someone gets through it quicker uh, and wants to uh, start bring any questions to it, um, I've gone through this and appreciate Carol how especially specifically about putting down the confirming person and everything else I think that's great um, I, I think that. <laughs> yeah no it's great and uh, I think you know the good news is, is we we have been through I'd say 80 85 percent of these before That's right. um, and really there was just a few items that were left um, so having gone through this getting I had a preview of this so I really didn't have anything um, I will point out to the board that um, there's still a bit of uh, work left to do down at the traffic uh, traffic signals uh, the the, uh, the study has been done um, and I think the loop uh, regulator or whatever detector. it is, is the detector has been replaced but <clears throat> there's still the adjustments that need to be made so the town engineer has requested uh, a hold back of $3,500 uh, on the uh, 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 for that um, there's also <clears throat> a bit of warranty work on the uh, on the trees and what have you uh, but that's that is all under warranty um, and uh, And obviously, the, the condos need to be marketed through June 11. But that, that, is, that is ongoing. And actually, we hope that this tonight's activities uh, actually move that along. Can I point out one thing that sure. relates to the marketing, just to be clear, <coughs> in the notes where it says next step? So, we are have uh, an agreement that tw all 12 units are the pre sale requirement. 
we have an agreement with our lender to um, get nine pre-sales. Um, with nine PNSs, they'll review and approve that, and then the partnership will decide. And we've gotten consensus among the partnership that as long as it looks like everything's going to move forward and close and, and, and button up, that that would be something that would go through a, an approval process. So uh, right now, just to give a quick update, I think we're at three PNSs. I think one came in today. Um, that have been signed, and there are a couple that have, are waiting until the PNS has been actually issued, so that they know that some certainty about the closing date and that type the of thing. Yeah, I just want to be clear about <coughs> that. There's still some s internal sign-offs from the lender and from the equity partners on the uh, PNSs at nine. Okay. Bruce, anything um, on that? Subject, Jake. Um, so, in the event that there are less than nine under agreement as of June eleventh, where where do we go? Um, everybody wants to see where we are. There's a circular thing that's happening with getting the PNSs. There's seven that were out for PNS. Like I said, we have two back that have been fully executed, have been approved by the lender. So the language and the form contract is sort of becoming more standardized. Each PNS is slightly different, but for the most part, we understand the parameters of that. Um, there are a couple that are dependent on the COs, and so they're saying they're going to sign, but once the COs, the final COs uh, are issued. Um, and there are a couple that are pending right now, just that are out there that are interested parties. So um, it's hard to say with these interrelationships you know, what happens. I think everybody wants to see that there are a substantial number of PNSs that are actually executed that are non-contingent that are going to close. And I think everybody's looking for certainty that the market's absorbing these and is, is not going to be an impediment. Um, the, the less that we have off of the nine, the sort of more difficult the approval process probably will be internally. But everybody's communicated, you know, willingness to, you know, to, to move forward just with, with, um, at least, you know, trying to have nine, and if we have less than that, there'll be judgment calls, but everybody yeah. seems to be... So, if you're, I mean, obviously, uh, as of June 11th, um, I mean, if you have nine under agreement, then you're ob contractually obligated to close, that so you, at that no, point... No, we, we have, with our lender, we have a, a, a pre-sale requirement of nine PNSs to be approved by our lender, mm -hmm. um, um, assuming that we get that approval. There's an internal partnership approval to, to close on the nine, um, and there's a you know definitely a willingness to do that. Everybody wants to see that there's nine that are there, demonstrating that the market's there, um, and that there's um, likely absorption of those final three. In a, in, a, in, in a, you know, so I guess my well, part of my question is if you're at that point where you have nine that are under purchase and sale agreement. Mm -hmm. Do you continue to market the other three for sale? Yeah, there would be a, a vote to close on the nine, yeah. and and that uh, is, um, the, like I said, the form contract from the lender perspective. It, it looks like that's not being a problem because they've already approved two contracts. Mm -hmm. um, technically, the the agreement was all twelve were the pre-sales, so there will be a formal vote that would be required within the partnership and, and the part the partners individually have expressed a willingness to do that. Um, they just want to see evidence that the, the rest of the units are going to, um, that the market's been demonstrated and that they're going to absorb in, in a you know, relatively short period of time. Okay. Um, I had a question on the Environmental Remediation Fund Agreement. Uh, under the requirements has no credits due. So, yeah. So, so Doug Hine looked into that. Yeah. I don't know whether we took, did we not talk about that? I don't think so. Okay. Sorry about that. That's okay. <clears throat> um, he looked into that about probably two or three months ago. Mm -hmm. And um, what it is, is the, there is money there, mm -hmm. but it will have to wait another three years. Because uh, I think it's in order for the uh, testing, yeah, you have to show that it's uh, clean. For, uh, I think that's it, and yeah. I think that I think there was a there was an outside date on it. I, I need to take a look at it, but mm -hmm. it was it was a it was a three year out uh, date that we get to go uh, back to Chicago Title and say, hey, you know, that no one has claimed this money. 
Mm -hmm. um, you know, we'd like it back. And so then it gets released to, to it the get, town. It should get released to the town at that point. Okay. That's, that sounds right. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but, but there's nothing to do now. Um, okay. And there's nothing that we can really hold up because of And that's going to survive. It has independent significance yes. outside of the outside of completion. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. That will persist okay. after this. Yes. Yeah, now it's on Adam's radar, so he's got, I'm sure, a tickler for whatever the date is on that, so. Okay. Um, and I have no issue with the $3,500 holdback for the optimization of signals, if that's what the town engineer says we right. need. Uh, and I commend everybody who's worked on this. This is a very good document. Yeah. Andrew? Well, considering I missed... 98% of the process. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this has been You're still part of it now. <laughs> I'm part of it now. My name's on it now. Uh, it's been being able to look at this tonight and some of the things that have been produced ahead of time have been great as far as getting up to speed. Um, I don't really have any follow up on what Bruce has said based on that. Um, I'm guessing that the dead trees across from the garage door of the apartment building are going to be replaced at some point. Yeah, that's the warranty. And any issues about lighting and, and things along those lines have to do with right view and not with A360. Is that correct? Um, the well, there's, we some inter, there's some interrelationship on the lighting between, because there's the, the, the access road, mm -hmm. not called Sims Road. Um, the lighting that's been installed was per the photometrics plan and per the original permits now. There was some questions about, uh, from an NPP perspective, about the light shades and because it's on a slope and the angles that the lights actually are on with the slopes, and there was additional shielding that was put on those lights, um, and um, and then um, a bright view that has a separate special permit. We we felt that those issues were resolved, um, and then when bright view came on with their lights. Um, there, I know that there's been discourse back and forth um, to with the neighbors and, and some issues. Okay. Um, I guess just to be clear, results. that isn't anything that we need to look at tonight. No, so so the lighting issues that have kind of come up are actually extraneous okay. of the LDA. Okay, the I SBA. know that they've been contentious. I just want uh, to sure that we were. Because if they're in line with the photometric plan, then... Right. They're within. They're within what's been approved, been approved already. Exactly. Okay. So, um, so. You you gave shields to Brightview, though, correct? Did we installed them? a bunch of uh, a number of shields um, to work with the neighbors, mm -hmm. and had thought we resolved that. Then when Brightview's lights kind of compounded, I guess the issue right in that particular area, um, we gave permission and gave the actual specifications for buying the permanent fixture, uh, the shades they go in. And so they're in the process of procuring those. I don't think, it, for some reason, it takes forever to get those. We went through the process when we got them. Um, we over-ordered and we had some extra ones, which we also put up um, in different places to sort of try to make the whole plan work as best we could without impinging the safety um, issues. And um, so we've given permission to Bright View. I think they have a requirement from the building inspector to install a few of these sh shields. And I, I know that they're waiting for those now as part of their close out of their project. I don't know where exactly that order is with them. Okay. We're going to go through the same type of matrix with Bright View, right? We'll go through a similar, similar one. Mm -hmm. I don't think it'll be quite as, it just isn't as much as, you know, I right. think, frankly, <clears throat> I think it's going to be more with Bright View for them to come back and make sure that they've done everything that you know, the last meeting we need to make sure right. that, that we're satisfied. I actually I actually took a drive there this weekend and you know they Me too. They <laughs> they've done work on the circle, they've done yeah, so I think I think it looks actually pretty good. So. Yeah. The street print went in today. Did it? Okay. The street print? Yeah. Oh where's the, the street uh, print? Oh for circle. right view, right, right, yeah. right. The I'm thinking your crosswalk. Okay. No, they did an infrared yep. and then Yeah. I watched okay. them for a while. There was a company yeah. called yeah. Melty yeah. um, yeah. Framingham was up there working for that. Okay. So. Great. Uh, Christine, anything else? So I, I saw that the dead trees are on here. There are a lot of dead plants. So I'm just 
wanting to know what your schedule is on, especially on the lower Vista Park, the more public areas. Mm -hmm. um, I know that the, the, the installer is on, has been on site, sorry, that's fine. Um, it was on site, they did a, a lot of extra hydro seeding, um, they, the new erosion control sorry. pieces have been put in place, the okay. bark um, barriers as opposed to the hay. I did see those, areas. yeah. And so um, I know that there are, there's some material that's on order, that's all under warranty. And the, the ministries are just starting to release you know, over the last couple of weeks uh, to release new new plant material. So I just don't know where exactly they are. There are uh, there are sections that were done by a different landscape company, um, and those were the ones that were done as part of the um, the forest restoration plan and the enhancement in the buffer zone. Um, and that company is now the um, manage, has a management contract. So. We're also waiting for, for those plant materials and the ones that are across from the garage are, are, are ones that were planted by that company. We have um, retainage on both and so and they're all under uh, warranty as well. So we're confident and we, we have like $80,000 of retainage, retainage. Um, on that. So um, okay. we're, we're comfortable replacing uh, what didn't make it through the winter. It was a tough winter. Yeah, you might need the 80000 we might. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of your evergreens, unfortunately, got zapped. Yeah. yeah, yeah was a, Planting was, late and cold, cold winter. It was a hard, winter. hard winter in a lot of different yeah, it ways. Was. So. It was. Okay. Just so they don't hang out too long. Mm -hmm. If you've got it in your radar, that's good. Yep. Um, speaking of retainage, do we have any retainage? Yeah, so that was something I was going to go over after oh, we just okay. got everybody's comments. Cause it, it, we had a hundred or something. Right, we've got a hundred, okay. and I can go over what, what I'm uh, what's left and, you know, talk about what makes sense. So, okay. But before I do, um, Carol, did you have anything you wanted to go over? Yes, I, you know, the, um, it's, it's well known that the abutters have issues with the lights. And um, I don't think any of us at this table, maybe Bruce saw the photometrics for the residential component. Andy. I know the board, that's true, Andy would have seen them. I know the board saw the photometrics for Brightview. I don't think, the board ever saw or understood or considered whether the um, Sims Road lights that were shown on the Brightview floor metrics were supposed to be just with Brightview's, the effect of Brightview's lighting. So um, to conclude, to you know, hit the punchline, if when the, we can find the photometric sheet for the residential, if there is a concern, if, if by looking at the paper and looking at um, measurements, if the board has a concern, I believe the board could always reopen the special permit. It, you know, there's no reason to necessarily think that this is um, the last that can be ever said about the lighting. If, if there is a real variance, I'm saying this for the benefit of um, Beth Ann Freeman, who's here. Um, and I know it, it has been a concern. Isn't it not true that in a few weeks or months or a year, if that were shown to be quite different, the board could reopen the special permit, could it not? Yeah, I, I think I think any anything that gets out of line with okay. the special permit could could of course come back up. Um, I'm yeah. saying I'm asking this because I, I I'm sure that at this point the the abutters are feeling a little anxiety about perhaps what if we don't get this addressed now? And, and I believe that it's not as urgent to get it addressed at this very moment, though I don't mean that with any disrespect for your concerns, but there are two, um, two photometric plans, and I don't think we even considered whether they were um, cumulative or whether the Sims Road effect on each was representing both the MOB parcel lighting, which is now Brightview, and residential. So I wanted to put that out, and if the board or well, I can I, guess I can I can address some of those issues. Is that um, the photometric plan was engineered? And it was the same engineer that Brightview had, same to the land engineer, LSI. Um, um, Beals and Thomas. Um, okay. So I do believe that the lighting was coordinated. Um, I do know that. Um, that there are affidavits that have been submitted as part of the building permit yeah. process. Okay. That what was designed and spec, um, those specifications were consistent with the plan and that the plan was, was built. Now, 
I know that there's issues about whether the light is flowing in the direction as it was intended, and that may, you know, that's that's a question that, that is out there. There have been some questions about whether the lights that were actually specified have been installed and are operating in the, in the way that they were intended to. Um, I think both Brightview and Arlington 360 have had representations from their consultants and from their general contractors and installers that yes, they are consistent. So I think that there may be an issue where people, um, you know, what was designed and approved was built, it's whether the impact of that is um, maybe needs to be reconsidered and, and that's where you know, it's difficult for us to make that judgment. But there are affidavits that have been collected. Um, I know that Brightview, and I don't want to speak for them because they have their own process and their own management that's doing that, but um, I do, we have talked to them and they've represented that their consultants have certified that it's, a, it's a consistent with the, with the, the, the town bylaw and that they meet the bright skies or whatever the terminology is and that they built what was approved in their plan and they have certified that mm -hmm. and with affidavits. So I'm not trying to say that there's not an impact. Um, the cumulative impact may be bigger than what was intended and that may need to be addressed. I think we've all tried to address it in our own way um, to minimize the impact. No one has an interest of, you know, ticking off the neighbors. Um, sure. So uh, there are some, 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 some life safety uh, components to this, which makes it difficult. Um, but um, I, I, I think that the dialogue has been open and, and uh, there's been a lot of discussion um, amongst the parties to try to resolve it. And I think that people would like to resolve it. I mean, just from an MPP perspective, I've had an incredible amount of time spent on light. And initially, it was very clear for the MPP, it said that the light couldn't basically go beyond the property line. So in that initial phase, we identified the neighbors that had the issues with the light coming over the line. And there was a long discourse about that. And that's when Arlington 360 came in and put shields up. And uh, we tested, and then we went a little further and tweaked them a couple of different times. As I said, there's been a huge amount of discussion about this. Once that was done and Arlington 360 was in compliant with the NPP, everything seemed to be going along a lot better. And then Brightview put on all their lights and it's like we went right back to square one. Um, Arlington 360 already had their temporary CO when the Brightview stuff came up. So in order for Brightview to get their temporary CO, the building commissioner came up and did an inspection and said, you know, you've got to address these lights. And they ended up putting temporary shields in a bunch of their courtyard lights, but they also put temporary shields on several of the lights that are owned by Arlington 360 because their lights made enough uh, brightness to go into the neighbor's areas that they then were not in compliance. So on the day that they were issued the CO, they put up all the temporary lighting, I mean the temporary shielding. And um, once that was in place, I actually met them and hand delivered the CO from the building department with the understanding that they were gonna come back and do the permanent shield. So at this point, Brightview hasn't done any of their permanent shielding, but they do have the temporary. And we are still getting calls and complaints from the neighbors. Most recently was about 10 o'clock this morning. Right. So. I guess I just want to talk about process for a second. I mean, what we're talking about here is the SPA and the LDA. And certainly we have, you know, the ability to go further, et cetera. But in order, the exercise that we're trying to do is, is within the, each of those documents, it says that um, it needs to be substantially complete for the final CO to be provided. Um, and so, so therefore, or we have to say it's substantially complete. Um, and so my own view of that is, is, is that means was that, was each thing that is specific to the redevelopment board been completed, um, which is the LDA and the, um, uh, and the S and the special permit, um, chart that we have in front of us. The lighting is kind of a separate issue in my mind. Um, 
in that um, it does affect the NPP at first, but then the shields go up. Once we say it's complete, then it moves into bylaw and whatever it is that the building inspector does. Um, in other words, um, if there's a bylaw issue, then the building inspector will need to you know, address that. If the building inspector has some other issues with safety or health or what have you, then he can, on his own, do whatever. But what he's looking for us to do is talk about, has it conformed to the LDA and the special permit? And those things are, with, are, are here. It's really him relying on the affidavits from the consultants that have to do with the lighting more than it is us saying that the lighting's okay. Because we're not the experts on lighting, right? We, we can't, you know, at least I know I am. Uh, I'm no expert on lighting. So from that perspective, that's kind of the exercise that we're trying to, trying to accomplish tonight in my mind. So, um, you know, it just, I'll, I've gone around the table. Carol, anything else? No. Nope. Um, before I just get... Just very briefly, the NPP... Could I get your name and... Uh, oh, Beth Ann Friedman. Yeah. And I'm both a neighbor and, mm -hmm. and a member of SNAP. Um, NPP is part of those documents. Absolutely. And so the NPP is saying that the light, there should be no light spillage onto a neighbor's property or the boundaries. If that's not being conformed to, then, I mean, that's not a separate issue. I mean, it's, the NPP is still part of these documents. So, thanks for that comment. So that's, that's you know, uh, how I'm viewing it, mm -hmm. and that's why my concern is that by you're saying, oh, that has nothing to do with it, um, you know, what's our recourse then? It, so In then, um, I'll ask the designated issue. town representative, do you have any other issues uh, under the... Uh, uh, so as long as the discussed. shields are all in place and they don't go over the property line, then they, uh, in my read of the NPP, yeah. they're in compliant. The question that's been raised more recently, and I'm not an expert, I don't, I'm not a lighting engineer. Nor uh, nor the na one of the neighbors went around with a lighting uh, meter, and the readings that she did were what she said they were inconsistent with what was shown on. The plan, and again, I'm not an engineer. I didn't participate, so I can't really comment on that. So she has the plan. She had some plan. <laughs> we um, she had a photometrics plan that was done before Brightview was planned to be there. So when it was going to be all residential. Okay, and, well that's different then. Yeah. Than the final plan. Well, I don't know if there's another one after that when Brightview came in. You know, Brightview. Yeah. Well, Brightview did it. Yeah, but there was one. So, the, so the but a, but important point here is is that the building inspector will rely on affidavits from the different consultants and, and everyone else who are doing these things. Really, what the building inspector was looking for from us, I just want to still once again see if I can't maybe I'm not explaining this well enough, but is more on all of the things that are not in your typical builder inspector purview. Health, mm -hmm. safety, done according to plan, okay? Built according to plan is really the building inspector's job, is to figure that piece out. What he was asking the ARB to do was to be able to say that outside of those things that are in my purview, okay, the built according to plan, um, uh, built according to plan health and safety of any occupants, mm -hmm. redevelopment board. It, have we covered everything? Okay, so that's kind of the distinction I'm, I, I'm trying to make here, and I don't know whether I'm doing a good job or not. So, and I, I think you are right, and I think the, you know, what's different about this project. I guess a lot of things are different about this project, but um, we've got an extensive. Uh, list of negotiated uh, negotiated items with the developer um, that the building inspector isn't really in a it's position to head. verify. Yeah. So he's saying, "Okay, redevelopment board, you were the ones who said, well, for example, you know, payment of minimum taxes to the town, or uh, record conservation restriction, uh, monitoring well. All the stuff that's on the matrix is stuff that the building inspector." isn't usually looking at when he's evaluating a building permit to completion or a special permit process. So he's asking us to report to the building inspector, inspectional services, that these things are done, which is why 
the items that are on the list are here, and it doesn't go back and incorporate all the other building stuff. So, for example, we're not in the position, you know, not only to evaluate the lighting, but the, you know, the, the, the <laughs> foundation mix and the, you know, the, uh, you know, all the other stuff, yeah. all the construction stuff. Um, so, it, and and one last thing on that too, though, uh, Bruce is is the other part. So is is the affidavit set against? So so that's that's the other piece that you know goes into his his thinking, and those are things that you know we're not we don't have to address either. So he's either and and the things that we have to address, he can't get affidavits for. So what is he getting affidavits for exactly? Do we know? Uh, it would be. Things like from the engineers with respect to lighting. So lighting, to, uh, something you know, from the landscape architects. Design. 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 Yeah, design, safety code, training. training. So do they? Do we have all the affidavits in already, or do we care? We don't care. Is that care. part of the it's part closing? Of the final CO process. Yeah. It is part of the final CO, you, but, but not all. We care that the. Yeah, the I'm just curious where we are. Building has building has building so he's still working on it. When we say it's complete, well, it's only in respect had, of the arms. He's received pieces. them in order. To, he's received most of them um, as part of the TCO. There's probably some more that he's getting as part of the final closeout. Um, okay. So, for the final CO. I know last time we talked, he didn't have the landscape ones, for instance. I'm right. wondering if he right. has those now. Right. He will by the time he issues. If it's he doesn't already. Issues. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, for those, to, in order to have the TCO, he wanted all the safety requirements for the you know the lighting, the directional signs and everything else to be right. done and, and now those are completed. So those affidavits are already in as it relates to the to the uh, the lights on Sims Road. What are not in are not necessarily I don't know where shelter and bright views affidavits are exactly um, because that's their project and their special permit and everything. Else. Yeah we'll ask them when they come in. Mm -hmm. So as far as recourse for the lights, we've already said that they could reopen the special permit. We could reopen the special permit if we need to address the lights. The building inspector. The, the recourse is really can with the building the lights. inspector. He, he's the first recourse if there's yeah, not it's satisfaction not ours. I think there. Have to do that before. It's not ours. That's I guess that's what I'm ours. saying. We're not we're not an enforcement body here. You know, we 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 tell the inspector what to expect. Uh, we tell the inspector what to expect. And then he has to see whether it conforms to that or not. And mm -hmm. if it does, then he can, you know, uh, provide the CO or whatever document he's being requested to provide. If it doesn't, then you know it, he he can deny it. So, but in the end, you know, in the way that he judges that, oftentimes is with an affidavit from somebody, you mm -hmm. know, an expert that says, you know, under penalties of perjury, I say that it meets the plan or something like that. So, and it meets the bylaw, or what have you. So, so really, that's what he's getting. But in the end, that's not this part. Our part is more of okay. The LDA and the special permit had a <coughs> bunch of stuff mm -hmm. that the building inspector does not usually deal with. Okay, redevelopment board, are we good? So. Right. Okay. I just because we have a resident here, I wanted to just know what the yeah. process for the, for the residents will be. Once we it's really do like issues, anybody I know else. it's not up to us. It's, it's really the same process as anybody else who has a problem with a light. Mm -hmm. It's a bylaw issue then. So, can I just ask a question? Does the bylaw take precedent over the NPP, or does the NPP take precedent over the bylaw? Well, so, the, the NPP says there's no light spillage onto neighbor's property, and a bylaw doesn't necessarily address spillage over neighbor's property. The NPP affects construction, the, the and the construction is over. Right. Well, that sounds like an issue. But I'm not sure. <laughs> if it's not, though. I mean, that's the process. It's not your issue. It may not be our issue, but if there is light spillage, and the MPP said no light spillage, well, no, if, if they're going to get an affidavit that the, says there's the no... If the lights aren't functioning yeah. as they were designed to do, and it's determined... That they need to be fixed. And light spillage is part of that. Right. Over the property line. If that's the what the concern is. The other question is on intensity. And I don't. Like that's, I said, what I don't the, yeah. that's what the spillage is intensity. Well, no. Because no, that's it's a different issue. Intensity. I, I really don't want to go down a rabbit hole okay. here. Well, so, just because. 
We're talking about it. I want to understand it also. I understand, but it's really yeah. about process at this point. Mm -hmm. I, and I understand that. Yeah, and and yeah, I understand that. Where one stop, this has to stop at one point, and something else has to pick up, you know, right after. And I think at this point, in my opinion, I'll put it like that. And obviously, the board can weigh in however however it wants. But but from my perspective, you know, we're at a jumping off point. Uh, and, and it has to come at some point, and I think, personally, my view is, is, is we are there, so. And I agree with you. Yeah. But I just want to make sure that there's going to be resolution to the lights at some point. I'm hearing, you know, that we don't want the neighbors to be upset. We're going to make sure there's no spillage, you know. Yeah. Intensity is the issue sure versus we'll, spillage. Yeah, that's going to have to be addressed. We're going to make sure that the lights are functioning per the plan and not differently than that. But we've built the plan. And according to the plan. I don't know exactly what the bylaw says about lights. Well, the other, the other <laughs> thing that's, that's complicating is that the original lights were a lot, I mean, during the permit process, the lights that were in the road before were the town lights and they were, there was much greater casting of light. So at that time, this was consolidating the lights in, in their throw of light, or that was what was in the original. Um, you mean with from, the hospital, the original so hospital? So it is difficult because a number of people are new to the process mm -hmm. and have moved in since those plans were done and are used to a certain condition that in the transition of the project. Like that, you know, it, there's been different expectations um, and it's just taken a long time to process. So um, there's also a, a new bylaw, I think, right, about lights. So <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of variables. Yeah. Um, That's why I can't say it. Like yeah. And it's yeah. what makes it difficult for you. It's not, it's very difficult. It's not like so cut and dry. It's, it's just not clear. That's what makes sense. Um, so, so the other thing I was going to say is um, with respect to, Carol, I think this chart's great. Thank you very much yes, to you, Laura, and everybody else for, you know, um, <laughs> getting into it and, and uh, checking everything off. I think it looks great. Team effort. Uh, exactly. I really appreciate it. Um, with respect to the holdback, there's been a couple of uh, things that we've talked about. And um, the traffic engineer specifically wants a $3,500 holdback. Mm -hmm. um, there's uh, potentially a little bit of regret. There's, there's other things that could happen over the course of the next month. We have the marketing of the condo still going on. Mm -hmm. So my recommendation to the board would be that we actually hold back 10,000 and release 90 of the completion um, for potentially the next month until the condos are sold and, you know. This is from the retainage? Yeah. From the 100,000? From the 100,000. So 90 would be released and 10 would be So this would be from the completion bond? Completion bond. Busted. You're using the word retainage, but it's. Oh, yeah, okay. there's no it's retainage. A okay, this is a. Yeah, it, it's a payment that was made at the beginning of construction through the construction loan process to the town. The original intention was that if the project got stopped along the way mm -hmm. and the town had to step right. in and, and sort of secure the site, right. get erosion control in place or do whatever they needed to do, there was some resources there. Yeah, actually, yeah. it was probably right before you got here, Christine, this was a big deal um, because the last time it happened, there wasn't enough money to even do erosion control mm -hmm. and everything mm -hmm. else. So they wanted to make sure, uh, we wanted to make sure that there was enough that if the, God forbid, the project went sideways yet again, um, that we would have enough to at least secure the site. Because back then, too, there was a security issue with the site, too, mm -hmm. in a big way. Okay. And the thought was, is with the 100, we could um, at least take care to secure the, well, I'm not sure we could have, but we could have tried. We could have, we could have tried a little bit harder. Put it in mothballs yeah. until the economy turned around. Turned around. So that's what right. it was for. Yeah. So it was. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. You were using the word retainage. I, I'm not. I'm not in your industry. I forget what that is. That is like something to, to hold on to and probably ten percent of the construction cost. Cost. And probably <laughs> and probably to you. Yeah, well, that would have been a lot bigger had I'd we done ten percent here. Yeah. Ten percent. Actually, we should have done ten percent. That would have been a lot better. Um, <laughs> but warming Jake's heart. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, let's go back. Um, so uh, so anyway. So so my my thought is is, you know, obviously the thirty five. I just want a little bit more headroom than that mm -hmm. in case of um, unforeseen things come up. So my thought, but I do believe uh, that, you know, we're down to the smaller things. So I think 10 makes sense mm -hmm. um, on that. So. Sounds right. 
Um, so that's all I had. Um, let me let me ask just one other question uh, to the designated town representative, since you since you were kind enough to come tonight. Um, so outside lighting and that type of thing, as far as the MPP is concerned, as we kind of go through this list and everything else, are you good? I like them 360 is good. Bright View still has some okay. things going on, but I like them 360 is all set. And I did send a letter to that effect to uh, Jake, and I think it was included in the package. It was. I just wanted to, okay. since you were kind enough right. to come, I appreciate yeah. it. So, great. Um, by the way, we also received, well, actually we should say this too, and maybe even include them in the record, is the letters from the CONCOM and the land trust. I think we got one from Brian Reverick, as well as from Craig Beckwith, oh. uh, 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 yes, the thank administrator, you. Of, uh, yeah. administrator of the Conservation Commission. Oh. And I don't have them here, Carol, but maybe we can, after the fact, uh, put them in, because I, I think that would be a good I document. Have, I have a, a copy of okay. the one from Corey. Great. And uh, I, don't. I would like to point out that in that, Christine was um, absolutely uh, that they were most appreciative, as are we, uh, with uh, Christine Sapinski's um, help in all of the uh, CR uh, type of stuff. Thank you very much, because I know I couldn't have done any of that. So thank you, you very much for your help. Can't do your stuff either. So, so, so thanks. <laughs> Nor do I want to. Yeah, exactly. Soon enough. You're welcome. Uh, You're quite welcome. Thank you. Um, Okay, so any other discussion? Board members? Anything? Okay, then I would like to entertain, the other thing that you've got in front of you is a memo that, um, that was drafted up uh, for my initialing that would essentially say exactly what we've talked about tonight. Um, we just have a couple small nits down below, Carol. Maybe uh, I'll, I'll initial this one, and you can initial the next one on my behalf after sure. it's cleaned up a little bit. Thank you. Um, and the, the long and the short of it is, is the, the punchline is, the ARB therefore affirms that all of its conditions have been met, meaning the Land Disposition Act uh, agreement and the uh, special permit uh, have been met. $90,000 can be released from the escrow account to cover the above, meaning the $3,500. Uh, and any other unforeseen items over the next month. So I guess I would like to entertain a motion to um, <laughs> do so much of what we've talked about here with the completion, as well as to authorize me to uh, initial uh, this. Okay. So I think, I oh, I'm question. sorry, yes. Why over the next month? Um, just to give a sense for when we would expect to release the remainder of the town. Oh, okay. Another way to say that is when you expect it to be done. <laughs> Even better. Yeah. 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 Okay. I've got a motion. Go for it. I've got uh, maybe two motions. So. Okay. Even better. Uh, first motion is with respect to the land disposition agreement, special permit, the conservation agreement, and the side letter agreement pertaining to Arlington 360's redevelopment at the former Sims Hospital site. I move that the ARB issue a certificate of substantial completion as to the requirements of such documents with the following provisos. A. The marketing of the condominium units shall continue through June 11th of 2014. And B. The sum of $10,000 shall continue to be withheld from the completion escrow to cover the cost of completing item special permit condition 5B and other unforeseen items that may arise over the next month. That's motion one. Motion two motion. is to move that the chair be authorized to initial the memorandum of May 19th, 2014 with respect to the retaining of $10,000 out of the completion escrow for item 5B of the special permit and other unforeseen items, the remaining $90,000 to be released to the developer. Great. And also, it's to the... Um, to oh, the, the memorandum, too, 
yeah. the director of inspectional services. You mentioned the Conservation Commission. Should you mention the ALT at the same time? I mentioned the agreement conservation with agreement, which well, the conservation is what, agreement. Yeah, yeah which is both okay. parties. Okay. I'm sort of taking okay. my cue Good. from what's written here. Internal, I can write that all out for you tomorrow. Or <laughs> <laughs> You better write it out tonight. Well, I, I got it. Got it. But, but I don't think anybody else would be able to. No, follow. no. We'd be going around and around. Circles and arrows and so on. Uh, do we have a second? Can we do a twofer? I'll second. Uh, did you want to second? That's fine. You, you I can, can do second one and one. one. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I'll you, second the first one. I'll second the second. <laughs> okay, <laughs> great. Uh, all in favor of the first motion? Aye. 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 All in favor of the second motion? Aye. Aye. Great. Okay. So that's done. I'm going to initial this. The earth didn't quake just this now. Is a, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect not. that. Almost. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank so you much. very much. I appreciate your hard work. Thank you. And yeah. yours. Yes, all of yours. All of yours. Yeah. Thank well, you very much. It's been a long haul. It has. Yeah. Thank we'll you. We'll wait till we're done with the yeah. last one. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, thank you very much. We appreciate it. And champagne. Mm -hmm. You guys did a lot more work. <laughs> thank you. By I don't far. know. It's been a I, lot for everyone. I think yeah. the neighborhood yeah. probably had more meetings than we could have had. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. sure. <laughs> yes. I was here an awful lot on the last Yeah. Yeah. There was a there was a while there where we were yeah. Agreed. Thanks, Becky. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Thanks, Rick. Take care. Thanks, Jake. Oh yeah. What else would I do? Thank you. Going to Jamaica? No. He's been. Okay. So we close out that one. Andy. Could Andy miss that? Oh yeah. Okay. Next item. Approval of minutes. So these are the May 12, 2014 minutes. So timely. Yeah. Go to start. Okay. Um, let's start first with a question on the documents used. We said the signed proposal. Do we need? Uh, I mean, the uh, nine photographs that Mr. El Kahuli, if I'm saying his name correctly, uh, brought with him. Do we need to also to mention the materials that were in our packet with the um, before and after sort of the Photoshop? Is that the signed proposal? Oh, is that the sign proposal? Okay. I don't know what else the sign proposal is. Was yeah, sign okay. Proposal? I, I'm happy with that then. Is I, it, if it's dated, as long as it's dated and identified, um, we should state who prepared it. You know, so yeah, you could use clear. some more information around it, I think, if you take a look. Do you need a copy? So you could add a date to that. I don't have the minutes. <laughs> But we I can, can, we can share. Mine's crappy share. otherwise. I'll <laughs> give it to you. I'm I can, we can write on this if you want. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So add date. Is that all we want to add? And, and who prepared the, um, the si name of the site company. That's what we usually do. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, and I had another, this is, I'm not really sure of myself here, but um, the proponent Mr. Al Kahuli, my sense is his name may be E L and space or hyphen and Kahuli. I'm not Possibly. sure if anybody else caught that, but I, mm. I think that might be the okay, correct spelling. Down, I'll check. Um, and then, the second to the last paragraph on page one, it does summarize what I said, but it doesn't state that. I actually moved, made the motion, and I did move that the board, so I would just, where it says removed, turn that into a comma, and then add the following. And moved that the board grant the special permit for signage as requested, subject to the foregoing conditions. So, sorry, I'm lost. Oh, okay, so oh, wait, here. No. the second to last paragraph on page one. Where right. it says Mr. Fitzsimmons summarized? Yeah. The new okay. signage. Oh, so, you wanted to say moved. Well, uh, it, what I was going to do is, I, it's okay to say summarize because I think I did summarize it, but then at the very end where it says removed period, turn the period into a comma and then add the following. And move that the board grant a special permit for signage as requested subject to the foregoing conditions. Okay. 
subject to the foregoing conditions? Con conditions. Which were that the lights can't be LED and we, the decals and the fence signs that had been removed stay removed. And then lastly, um, on the Arlington 360s, but I'm just not quite sure if Grandscapes, was that the correct name? No, it's Groundscapes. Groundscapes. I have that on this copy too. She got it right later on. Okay. Yeah. Done. That's all I have. I had none. Okay, I have just a few more. So on the first page, the paragraph um, that starts with Chris Loretti, at the, the last sentence, we mentioned with a specific memo justifying their decision. Do we need to explain that anymore? A specific memo? Is that a memo from? I don't know what that is. It was means. his point. From the know. chair. I, I mean, at from the, time, the I director of planning. Either. He was saying that the director of planning was supposed to give us a. From the director of planning? Memorandum. Okay. Justifying their decision? Actually, I don't know. I don't know. But I think what. Mr. Loretti was saying was that in order to expand exceed the number yeah. of signs, the planning director is supposed to give the ARB a heads up. Um, okay. A memorandum. Reason Which she did. So we had a memorandum. Yeah. Okay. So then on the back, the 360 list. Mm -hmm. um, the one, two, three, fourth bullet on the steep slopes were cleared of invasive weeds. Um, I'd like to scratch um, on the second sentence there. Uh, it should just say Japanese knotweed is present. It can be treated by groundscapes. Um, they are proposing a multi-year program for knotweed, honeysuckle, and bittersweet invasives as well. So that's the way I'd like that to read. I think that would make more sense. Um, and then the next bullet, update to forest management plan, is due. Um, Jake had mentioned that he was scheduling the arborist for May 30th. So, if and the arborist put that is in there. Scheduled. Scheduling the arborist, um, Jake Upton uh, stated that he is scheduling the arborist for May 30th. Because he did throw out that date, actually. Okay, on the next bullet, after thermoplastic markings will be installed on the road. I just wanted to add installed. Then checks have been delivered to the land trust totaling 40,000. We should add totaling 40,000, I think. Because they got two checks. Uh, to leave the okay groundscape on the second of the last bullet groundscapes advised to leave the brush below the lower vista park in place to stabilize the slopes so I want to insert below the lower vista park so we know where that is there's brush in other areas I think too um, okay the last one we can leave the way it is so then two other things he did mention, too. I wanted to add a bullet. The marketing trailer site is being seeded and trees <coughs> are being planted this week. He had told us that. And he had also mentioned the condo sale. There were two purchase and sales and seven out. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to add those two bullets. Uh, Mr. Upton said shelter confirmed that their lights meet the plan. So this is two sentences down from the bullets. I thought he had said Brightview is installing shields that were provided, but he didn't say that tonight. He said Brightview had installed temporary shields. He doesn't shields. want to speak for Brightview, I think. But they did install temporary shields. I think he had yeah. told us that. We talked mm -hmm. about it that night. Well, that's what uh, Rick Gallagher confirmed earlier. Yeah, Rick Gallagher. Yeah, so Brightview has installed temporary shields. I could take this up for you. Temporary shields that were provided. That's it. <laughs> um, the, the only comment I've got on this is. Um, yeah. Is third from the final paragraph? 
Uh, Mr. Kerr asked the availability of board members for a meeting on May 19, 2014. He asked that staff meet with Mr. Upton to review. It, I think what I ask is for you to review the completion matrix. And that staff advised the ARB. I just want to make sure that it's not Mr. Upton, Mr. Upton, Upton staff. Uh, advising us. <laughs> Yeah, we're all done. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> surprise, surprise. I think we're fine. Um, uh, and that staff advised the ARB in their vote that the project is substantially complete. Does that make, it, I just want to separate those two notions a little bit. So. Sure. Uh, and that's what I have. So motion to accept as amended. So moved. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 I think that's all we had on the old agenda for this evening. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. That sounds like a very nice motion, and I will entertain that motion. Second? Second. Second. Mr. Bunnell, all in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.